Hello, my name is Jared Ludlow, Publications Director at the BYU Religious Studies Center, your weekly resource for gospel scholarship. And today we'll be talking about some possible readings that can accompany your Come Follow Me reading for April 17th through 23rd, Matthew 18 and Luke 10. The first is an article from a, a book, and the, it's called I Forgive You, The Freedom of Forgiveness. And the book is by Deborah and Richard McClendon on the commitment to the covenant, strengthening the me, we, and thee of marriage. They start off by talking about how Ruth Bell Graham, wife to evangelist Billy Graham, is credited with having said, a happy marriage is the union of two good forgivers. And so they go on to talk about how each of us can develop and apply the principle of forgiveness to bless ourselves and our marriages. Initially, they talk about the definition of forgiveness, both what it is and what it is not. And one of the important points related to that is that forgiveness is not conditional forgiveness. And then they go on and discuss forgiveness in marriage as a gift of the Spirit that requires a great deal of personal effort as well as emotional and spiritual maturity. They explained that to both seek forgiveness and to offer forgiveness is a choice made by each spouse individually that is foundational for the success of couples as they navigate their life together. Finally, they discuss the fruits of forgiveness and how the decision to forgive in marriage is marriage saving. In doing so, the influence of the Spirit is allowed into our hearts and our relationship. The second article is called Choosing the Good Part it's by Brent Top, a former dean here of religion at BYU. And it comes from a religious educator article. In this article, he focuses on the Mary and Martha story in Luke chapter 10. And he emphasizes the importance of closely reading the text and paying attention to the different words in it. And then he basically talks about two major categories related to this story. The first is the devil's dangerous doctrine of distraction, and the second is putting Christ at the center of our lives. In the first case, uh, he talks about how in our day the Lord has commanded us to be anxiously engaged in a good cause, from section 58 of the Doctrine and Covenants. However, that doesn't mean we have to be anxiously engaged in every good cause. And so then he goes on and talks about how good things can take away better things. In the second category, putting Christ at the center of our lives, he talks about the phrase that one thing that is needful, that good part, is Christ himself, his atoning sacrifice, his teachings, his plan of salvation, and his charity, his pure and perfect love for us. This is not just the good part, but it is indeed the best part, the only part that can never, ever, ever be taken away. No matter what else we do in life, he uh, concludes, what we choose, what we enjoy, or what we become, it will have been in vain if we don't fully choose the good part, even this best part, and take a heaping portion of it into our lives. Christ is the bread of life and the living waters that can nourish our souls and satisfy our spiritual hunger.